Hello, and welcome to Community Pulse. I'm Erlinda Patterson, your host, and today we have an exciting program for you. We have two guests for you, and I want you to meet them now. I have with me Amina Islas. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And we have Richard Arias. Yes. Right. And you're both with the Terrell Transitional Program. Yes. Okay. What is the Terrell Transitional Program, Amina? A uh, trail transitional program, what we do is we help homeless veterans mm -hmm. that need assistance in housing or they're an addict to something and they need help in that. So we give them a home and give them some education and help them get off of any uh, drugs or any substance that they're on. Okay, and Richard, what is your role in this? What, do you, what is your title, first of all? Well, I'm the clinical director of our, of our uh, program that we are connected with the VA hospital. It's mm -hmm. a 21 bed residential treatment program beds. yes wow. for uh, homeless veterans uh -huh. and we offer case management and uh, veterans that are sent to us by the VA hospital are housed for up to 24 months yes. and uh, we give them case management we link them up to resources in the community we get them up to the VA hospital so that they can uh, reestablish their lives mm -hmm. and, and, yes. uh, and end this homelessness that they're caught in. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's kind of a trap, right? Yeah, it can be. And and uh, some of them aren't aware of the resources that they mm -hmm. actually have available to them. And as veterans, they've earned these, these resources. Absolutely. And we try to make sure that they're aware of everything they have available to them in the community uh, within the Inland Empire, Riverside right. and San Bernardino. Right. As board chair, I mean, yes. uh, how do you get this information out to the community, to the public? Well, uh, as for myself, what I do is I work for, a, a, say, a, like a liaison, right. and I go to different agencies that are out there, and mm -hmm. I just get on the phone and just start talking. It's oh, the best way to do right. it. Uh, go to any functions that are out there. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, congressmen may have uh, some functions going on. Like and I met you. Yes, <laughs> like I met you. Right. And we go to those, and we just introduce ourselves and let the public know that we're here to, to assist and to help. Mm -hmm. And if maybe we can have a connection through there, maybe they need or they have someone who needs help and they don't know how to go about that, mm -hmm. then they sit down with us and talk with us. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah, I remember meeting you. Yes and giving you my card and you called yes. and I was so excited about that. Yeah, yes. I almost forgot about you, almost. <laughs> but when you called, I said, great, got to have them on the program. Oh, yes. This way the community knows yes. what Terrell Transitional Program is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, they do. It is. So what do you do exactly for the vet? Say there's a vet that's a homeless person and he hears about you and he comes to you. What is the first thing you do? Well, what happens is uh, we have an outreach program at Terrell Transitional, mm -hmm. and uh, we go out and seek out uh, the homeless veterans throughout the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's a small portion of it. The majority of our clients are referred to us through the Loma Linda VA Hospital, oh. and they will go yes. in seeking assistance, and they have an outreach program as well. Okay. And the VA then does an initial screening to make sure that the person is a veteran mm -hmm. in, in, in need and, and, uh, and has an honorable or other than honorable discharge. Right. At which point there's a screening done, and then we are contacted. I go up to the hospital, do a one-on-one -on -one interview with the with oh, the individual, okay. and then we take them down to our program and we get them uh, settled. Mm -hmm. And then the, it starts from there. At which point they will have group sessions, uh, therapy sessions, and also uh, case management one-on-one -on -one conferencing where we get them hooked up to all of the resources available to mm -hmm. them. Uh, statistics, how many vets would you say we have that are homeless? Roughly the last count, and the VA does this along with HUD-VASH, uh, they found approximately 472 homeless veterans in the San Bernardino Riverside wow. area. And that's probably a low number because we don't mm -hmm. get to contact right. all of them. Yeah. So it's important that we get the word out. You know, there are a lot of people in the community that aren't aware that, mm -hmm. that a program like this exists, but know a veteran in need. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that by sitting here meeting with you today, we'll be able to get the word out so that Absolutely. these gentlemen and women mm -hmm. can get their the resources. That's what I was just going to ask you. Do we have women out there as well? Yes, we have women and children, which is a shame. Oh. We are in the process of opening up a shelter for women and children as oh, well. Good. So we're excited about that. I would say within 90 to 120 days, 
we should be able to have that up and operational. Oh my goodness, what exactly will you be doing with that group? Uh, the same thing as we do with the men, uh -huh. uh, help them in the system if they're on any substance, we can go ahead and help them get them off of that. Help them with education, help them with um, any um, benefits that they have and they don't know of, we can help them with that. Some of them actually come in with no licenses or IDs oh, or yeah. even birth certificates or uh, diplomas right, <laughs> and they right. all need this so we help them with all that. I always wonder when I see someone pushing a cart and you oh. know they're homeless. Yes. Um, you know, and know more, more and more, mm -hmm. are they a vet? You know, are they someone that got caught up in the system and got lost somehow? Mm -hmm. Breaks your heart. It does. It <laughs> certainly yes. does. So it's really great when this program was started. Now, how old is this program? Well, Terrell Transitional uh, Assistance Program has been doing work with homeless people for uh, about 10 years. Okay. However, we incorporated and we are a 501c3 charity for the mm -hmm. past three years. Mm -hmm. And we've been sheltering homeless veterans through the VA hospital on a temporary basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, also through uh, the San Bernardino Drug Court. Okay. And parole, California mm -hmm. Department of Corrections. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, this 21 bed facility that we're gonna have a grand opening here within the next 30 days right. uh, is brand new and we received our grant per diem through the VA and a capital grant through the federal government yeah. to build okay. this facility. So uh, this is, is new and we've expanded. We've, we've closed down our shelters mm -hmm. to put in all of our resources into this 21 bed facility which is long term. Right. It's mm -hmm. up to 24 months and, yes. and uh, we look for uh, great things to happen mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. We have gotten so many people coming in and supporting us uh, from Office Depot down to uh, Ashley's Furniture. Uh, even uh, some of the Native American tribes have come in together. Uh, Sam Manuel, San Pasqual, and Paula and Puma have come in. How about some of your politicians? Are yes. they very supportive? Yes, we have Joe Baca who is extremely supportive of us and we love that. Oh, great, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. I see you've gotten some recognition also oh, from yes, different we do. politicians. Yes, we do. What are some of the awards you received? Uh, I actually can't remember them all. Just mention a couple. I believe that uh, Congressman McLeod was one of them. Uh -huh. uh, let's see, and... Um, Assemblyman Mike, Mike uh, Morrell. Okay. Now, I, as a clinician, I'm not I've not had a lot of close contact right. with these people, uh -huh. but I've been to some of the conferences. Okay. And uh, some mm -hmm. of our, our main uh, supporters are some of the labor unions, the oh, IEW. Yes. And That's wonderful. The, the laborers union, the pipe fitters, the electricians mm -hmm. union. And, and they will help us with workforce development for some of these clients okay. who mm -hmm. may not have a trade and we can get them involved with these unions. Oh. And they're, they're working with us hand in hand. Uh, some of the recognitions that Terrell has listed mm -hmm. can be found on our website. Yes. Off the top of my head, I can't really oh, name sure. them off. Right. But if you go to Terrell Transitional Assistance Program dot org, okay. there is a complete history on our 501c3, yes. along with letters of recommendation and awards. Even, I mean, Governor Schwarzenegger. Yes. Past, wow. past Governor Schwarzenegger sent us a letter of commendation. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. great. Uh, they're all there for the you know, if anyone ter and, cares and to look. Interesting. And also, there's a spot. Here's my commercial. There's a spot mm -hmm. on the bottom for uh -huh. donations. Okay. They can click donation and it will go directly to Rel Transitional. And mm -hmm. uh, along with our website, there's a complete financial report in there and financial status of our company. So okay. Okay. any questions from the community about us can be found on our website. Right. Okay. Uh, one of our biggest uh, foundation that's helped us is the McMullen Family Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we would love to give them our thanks for all that they have done and helped us with. That's great. It's mm -hmm. really good when all these groups come together yes. to help yes, and make is. a success and a success for the future of our vets, Exactly, our homeless vets. Yes. Yes. Because after all, they did go out there and put their life in the forefront yes, for us. Yes, they did. Right. They certainly did. They sure did. So what phone number can they call uh -huh. they if can. they should need help or <laughs> supposing maybe they want to give help? Yes, they can call our office, which is area code 909. Mm -hmm. 475-8600. I also have my personal phone that they can call, which is area code 909-663-4022. Okay. But for immediate and quick results, they contact the Loma Linda VA Hospital. Okay. And mention that they're homeless and need help, and they will be directed to right the to homeless uh, liaison. 
Mm -hmm. And her name is Josie Escalante. Okay. And she would then refer them directly to us. I mm -hmm. see, I see. Wow, it sounds like you guys are busy bees. Yes, we are. <laughs> you are, you are. After all, you're here too. <laughs> and we're going to make sure that the public knows that Terrell Transitional exists. Yes. And we're going to get that phone number out. Wonderful. So Great. make sure that someone, you know, it might affect someone. Oh, yes. It could. If it just affects one person, person. that gets help or gives help, it's a big difference. Yes, it is. And, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that because as a clinician, I, I need to let you know that even though we may help one veteran, mm -hmm. most people aren't aware of the fact that when you help that one, you also help 10 people around them. Absolutely. Oh, yes, you do. Because, uh, you know, we, we try to reunify them with their families, mm -hmm. with the community, you know, with a job. I mean, there are a lot, of, there's a trickle-down effect that right. most people aren't aware of right. that really benefits the community as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, especially the children, you know, with, with their missing parent, you know, right. and, and uh, or future children. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we owe a debt of gratitude to our veterans, and, and being a veteran myself, I have a really close bond with this whole uh, mm -hmm. uh, operation, mm -hmm. and I really want to see it succeed. And, and right. we desperately need our community's assistance and partnership. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, you know, I think our time is up. Wonderful. Before we close, would you like to say anything? Um, well, I would like to thank all those that have supported us mm -hmm. in this program because it's not just us we're helping. We're helping the community that's out there mm -hmm. and all that there are lost. Okay. So thank Richard? you. Uh, I would like to invite you to come out to our grand opening. We'll be sure and send uh, some, some literature for you. Absolutely, And please. hopefully uh, come out. And being a resident of Rialto, I'm really happy that you invited us down here. And, you know, let's do some good work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we're happy that you're here today. Thank you so much thank for you. participating in this program. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you. we're done. Thank okay. You. Well, Community Pulse, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, it's been great. We're going to take a quick break and come right back. All right, thank you. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Brushy brush, brushy brush, brush your teeth Every day and every night Now it's your parents' turn, here's what you gotta do Let them have your toothbrush so that they can brushy brush your teeth Great job, you're almost done Five, four, three, two, one, let's go! <laughs> Have your teeth stay healthy, brushy brush with a grown-up every day Welcome back. That was an interesting commercial, wasn't it? We're back to Community Pulse. I'm Erlinda Patterson, as I said before, and we're glad that you're with us again. We have a wonderful guest with us today, and we have Norma, Senator Norma J. Torres. Glad to have you here. Very nice to be here with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And you covered District 32? 
I do. Is that correct? I do. Could you tell me a little bit what area that is? Sure, absolutely. It's uh, a little over a million people that I represent. Wow. From uh, the LA County line, city of Pomona, all the way to the city of San Bernardino. And um, I like to use the 210 and the 60 freeways are uh, as you oh. know, the anchor um, borders. Quite a big district. Quite a big district. Yes, yes it is. Now, uh, how long have you been a senator? I've been a senator for just a few months. Uh -huh. In May, it'll be a year. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I. Um, what got you interested in politics? Wow. It's, uh, it's a really sad story. I'm oh. a 911 dispatcher by trade. Oh. Um, it was a call, you know, of an 11-year-old girl that was murdered that oh. got me involved in the political process and speaking out for those who don't may not have a voice. Right. Um, so I've been in politics since the year 2000 when uh -huh. I was first elected um, to a city council position and then elected mayor. And in 2008, there was an opportunity to run for state assembly. Oh. And I have been in Sacramento since then. Oh, wonderful, yes. wonderful. How many offices do you have? I have three. Three. Um, well, one in, in the state capitol. Okay. And I love for my constituents to visit me in the capitol. Okay. I think it's uh, such a wonderful thing to happen. I try to meet with them personally when they come up. Right. So uh, that is, you know, one of my little plugs here. Okay, great. Uh, I do have a, an office in uh, the city of Chino uh -huh. on Central Avenue, okay. and we're opening up this month an office here in San Bernardino. Oh, good. Yes. Good. So. There's several locations so people can go to if they need help. We want to try to be as accessible as we can. Um, people need services. They need oh, help yes. for, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If we can't help them, we'll find someone uh, to help them. Okay. What are some of the important issues that you see facing in the year 2014? 2014, I think it's going to be a very interesting year. Number How one, so? uh, the economy okay. here in Rialto, you know, it, it's across uh, the board. Across the board, the Inland Empire, uh, right. to me, is it has always been ground zero for transportation, mm -hmm. movement of goods. Uh, we are an inland port, okay. and um, we have to focus on the job recovery. Mm -hmm. It's happening. Um, we, we, you know, we, the, the economy has grown uh, a little bit, but we need to focus more on job opportunities for the Inland Empire. Our unemployment rate continues to be in the double digits, and right. we, you know, we are one of um, the poorest counties in the nation, and that is a really sad place to start. That's a sad place to be at. Mm -hmm. That really is. I could see why you went into politics. You have a desire to change it. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, have you written any bills t that would help that? I have been. Um, we're putting our bill package together oh, good. Um, as we speak. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a legislative deadline of uh, next week where mm -hmm. we have to introduce all of our bills. So, we're looking for ideas, you mm -hmm. know, from from the district, from constituents on issues they think, you know, it ought to be a law or maybe it shouldn't be a law that we can revisit. Mm -hmm. um, I have been legislating around the issues of housing, affordable housing. Great. In the assembly, I was the chairwoman for uh, housing and community development, so I did a lot of work around that. Uh, was able to bring two billion billion dollars wow. to the state of California, mm -hmm. federal uh, money uh, to help people stay in their homes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now you have a location, a new location, right in Chino. Yes. Is the location. Now, what are some of the services that uh, constituents? Uh, community members can receive from your offices. Yes. Any um, constituent services around any state department, mm -hmm. for example, uh, DMV, mm -hmm. Department of Motor Vehicles, if they have an issue registering their car or renewing their driver's license, call our office. Okay. Um, we can try to expedite that for you. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes we intervene and, and, and try to schedule appointments a little bit closer. Uh, for our constituents, oh, good. yeah, more good. in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. uh, EDD, yeah, with all of these What's problems, um, they uh, unemployment. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Or okay. yeah, so we can help um, right. with push it a little quicker. Yes, or there are disputes uh, with uh, their taxes. Mm -hmm. um, if the taxing agency is coming, you know, um, um, there's a dispute in how much they owe in in their state taxes. We can intervene, not to say that, you know, we can make it happen so they don't have to pay, but mm -hmm. we can try to help them 
um, through those processes, either setting up appointments or helping them file uh, paperwork. Right, right. So you help you have uh, uh, help in that area with the, with representatives. I do. I have four people that work in my district office mm -hmm. right now. Yes. Well, that's great. That's yes. great. So people can call the office and try to get some assistance that way. Absolutely. Right, right. Now, do you have any upcoming activities in the city of Rialto? I do. Oh, I have. Uh, Tell us. <laughs> yes, it is uh, one of my very first uh, Capital New Corners uh -huh. is happening right here in Rialto. Uh, it is my way of bringing the state capital to every corner of my district, and okay. we're we're um, April mm -hmm. April third. Uh, we are starting, um, what we will be having here in Rialto at the Rialto um, School. Oh, I see, yes. I see. So how exactly will that happen? Uh, it, they are tailored so that uh, constituents come in. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for them to have a five minute conversation with me, one-on-one. Oh, -on -one. Okay. Uh, folks are invited you know, to attend a coffee. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, town halls are, are productive, mm -hmm. but I found that in this economic downturn, it's easier and people find it a lot easier to talk to me on a one-on-one -on -one one -on -one. and they're not embarrassed or ashamed to talk right. about the issues that are really important to them. So it's going to be like satellite meetings. Throughout the district, Throughout yes. the district. That's great. That's a great opportunity. Absolutely, we've it's been doing that since I've been for for not only for the constituent to receive assistance or help, yes. but for you to know what the constituents need. As I have well. learned so much from um, about the communities mm -hmm. that I represented um, over the last five years by having these community coffees, the, the right. capital in your corners, because like I said, it's an opportunity to talk to them directly. Mm -hmm. um, I see it as an opportunity for me. You know, other folks see it as an opportunity for them to lobby. Right me on issues that are important to them, right. it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a win-win. Okay. What are some of your priorities? Well, my priorities is try to bring more jobs mm -hmm. uh, to the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, that as many people as I talk to and as important as it is to bring um, services mm -hmm. to my constituents, People don't necessarily want another handout. They want right. a job. And you know, that is, that it, we have hard workers here in the Inland Empire. Uh, for me, it's important for corporations right. um, to see that and to see the face of the Inland Empire. Mm -hmm. We had a program where we mm -hmm. talked about transitional housing. Yes. And uh, the vets and the homeless. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion about that? It is so important for communities to embrace um, this type of housing because um, you cannot, even if you provide a job mm -hmm. um, to someone, many times, you know, low wage jobs are not right. enough to uh, to put a roof over oh, no. someone's head or, yeah. you know, to pay for gas and, and all of the things that, That's a big concern. that we need. It is a huge concern. Right. So um, transitional housing, I think it's important. It will be a for you know, sure, it will be a, a hot topic for us in the state capitol this year yes. as we look at prison reforms, as we look at sentencing reforms. If people are being let out of prisons and they don't have a place to live, they cannot access the services that are that are available to them in right. the community. Right. Um, so it is key for all of our safety. The problem that I have seen is the NIMBYism. Mm -hmm. You know, people think, well, I don't want those folks right. in my community, not understanding that they're here either way. They're right. under a bridge, they're in an alley, and it's safer for all of us mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that um, there's a place for them to mm -hmm. call home where services are rendered and where uh, we can keep track to ensure right. that they are staying sober and not continuing the criminal life. It saves us millions of dollars by Ultimately, it does. in the long run. Abs and so families, right. children, you know, that are- Keeps the family together. Absolutely. Right, right. I uh, drove by and saw homeless ladies laying mm -hmm. on the, yeah. by the Arrowhead Regional Medical Center, and I felt so bad. I yeah. said, you know, where could she go, you know? I had a fire uh, in 2005 in my home, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that the only difference between a homeless person and me was that I had a credit card, mm. a credit card with zero balance, right. and I can check my three kids and my husband and, and myself into a hotel right. 
and charge my life for a year. Right. If I didn't have that, I, I would have been either in my car mm -hmm. or living with a relative right. somewhere. Right. Or so, in a shelter. Or in a shelter. You don't know, you know, when your name's going to come up. Right. And, and anybody could become homeless. Right. It certainly is. Yeah. That's a good point. That's it absolutely is. a very good is. point. Yeah. You know, our time is almost up. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. But it's been a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. And it, I feel like we need to talk some more. I do too. I think we need to do a second a second show on you. Absolutely. I would love to come back and, yeah, and talk we some more. That. Yes. We certainly will do that. I'll talk to your staff and see when we can do that again. Thank you yeah. again for the opportunity. But before we do close, though, I'd like yes. you to give me uh, a statement to the community mm -hmm. about what you'd like to see in the future. Well, I would really love to see um, the entire Inland Empire community working together to improve the quality of life for everyone. It is not acceptable that we are one of the poorest counties. San Bernardino County is one of the poorest counties in the nation. So we have to pull our resources together. And if we can, if we can do it, I think this is a time and this is a year for us to do it together. It certainly is. And before we close, Senator, uh, that activity that we spoke about, would yes. you please mention it again? Absolutely. We are having Capital in Your Corner here in the city of Rialto on Thursday, April 3rd at Rialto Middle School, and it's from 5 to 7 p.m. Sounds good. And yes. there will be a phone number printed on, on the graphics as well. For more information, for yes. For more information, yes. So. Thank you very much again for being on the program. Thank you. It went by awfully fast, yes. and we need to bring you back. Thank you so much. We will definitely do that. Absolutely. All right, Community Pulse, it's over now for today. But until next time, I'm Rolinda Patterson. See you then. Bye-bye.